let's chit chat about the differences between Apple's M1 and M2 processors. Welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. In this video, let's talk about Apple's brand new M2 processor that was just announced at WWDC 2022. At DubDub, Apple usually doesn't release new hardware, but this year we were surprised with both a MacBook Air and a 13-inch MacBook Pro equipped with Apple's M2 processor. So let's compare that M2 against the existing and still available M1 processor before we get our hands on these new machines. Apple's M2 is built on an enhanced second generation 5 nanometer process. It includes 20 billion transistors, which is a 20% boost over the 16 billion contained in the M1. Additionally, it processes about 15.8 trillion operations every second, which is a 40% increase from what the M1 was capable of. So they're using an updated process to build the M2, but how does it fare in terms of cores and performance? Well, the M2, just like the M1, is an eight core chip. There are four high efficiency cores and four high performance cores. Apple though has increased the clock speed on some of its cores, allowing them to run a bit faster. And taking all this into consideration, the M2 is able to run up to 18% faster than the M1 while drawing the same amount of power. If I could just interrupt myself for one moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Jamf. Jamf is the de facto standard in Apple mobile device management, and it's trusted by more than 62,000 businesses, schools, and hospitals. Apple's exceptional hardware is only half of the equation. How you secure, manage, and empower your users with that technology is the other half, and Jamf makes that happen. Jamf has the ability to scale to any business, whether you've got just a handful of iPhones or iPads or tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, or Apple TVs, Jamf can be your solution. Jamf is ready to scale to any size business, whether you've got a handful of iPads or you have tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs, Jamf can be the solution. Recently, it introduced App Installers, which is an automated way for IT teams to update third-party Mac apps when a new version is released. Jamf automatically sources, packages, and deploys the new versions, ensuring users have the latest features and security patches. On a personal note, I've actually had the opportunity to sit down with several organizations that have rolled out Jamf MDM solutions in their businesses, and they have always spoken extremely highly of Jamf software and credit it with making all of their goals a reality. You can get started today and start your free trial by following the link that is down in the description or by heading to jamf.com. Thank you again very much to Jamf for sponsoring this video. If we turn and look at the GPU, there is now an eight or a 10 core option for the GPU versus the M1 that was limited to either seven or eight cores. When it draws the same amount of power, the M2 will have 25% more capable graphics than the M1. And when you max out the power, the M2 will have a 35% boost in graphics over the M1. Both chips include Apple's 16 core neural engine, though Apple says there is a new next generation neural engine and secure enclave. In numbers, the neural engine is reportedly up to 40% faster at operations than the one contained in the M1. Another difference between these machines is the memory. Apple uses a great unified memory architecture across its silicon, and with the M2, it now has 100 gigabytes per second of bandwidth for memory, which is a 50% increase over the M1. Rather than being capped at 16 gigs, you can now configure an M2 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro with up to 24 gigs of memory. Apple's also brought some other features from the M1 Pro 
to the M2 processor. For example, Apple has new hardware accelerated video encode and decode engines. So there's hardware accelerated encode and decode video engines as well as a dedicated ProRes encode engine and a dedicated ProRes decode engine on this M2 chip, which means anyone who's using it for video tasks at all should see definite improvements in their rendering and exports. Apple has just announced these new chips and I have not yet had a chance to try them out for myself. But I think Apple has done a great job on its first, second generation of silicon for the Mac. Apple still has the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the M1 Ultra that are above the M2 chip. So don't worry that those chips are going to be eclipsed by the M2. Apple will surely be introducing an M2 Pro, an M2 Max, an M2 Ultra at some point down the line. This is just the beginning, starting out in these consumer machines, and it is a great step forward. Is it a big enough upgrade over the M1 to warrant upgrading your M1 machine? I'm not so sure quite yet. I have to get my hands on a new Air and MacBook Pro and test them out for myself and see how much of a performance difference there actually is in real world use. But from these numbers, it's definitely tempting for some users. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. Still have a lot more videos headed your way.